Hey, what's up, Foundry family? Welcome to our house. This is my family. And we get to do the introduction to... Moses! Moses! So follow along with us in your devotion book. Moses' life can be split up into three 40-year segments. The first 40 years were spent in Egypt being nursed, educated, and trained to be a somebody. The second 40 years Moses spent in the desert of Midian as a shepherd. He was nursed by solitude and taught by God and realized that he was a nobody. The last 40 years Moses was a leader, visited with God himself, and discovered just how God can use a nobody. To better understand the life of Moses, it may be helpful to review the circumstances into which this great leader was brought into. The Israelites first came to Egypt because of Joseph's brothers. If you recall, they were extremely jealous of their brother Joseph and they had sold him off as a slave. Joseph ended up in Egypt, and with God's blessing, soon was elevated to become Pharaoh's right-hand man. Eventually, when Joseph invited all of his 70 famine-stricken members to move to Egypt, they were given the best land on which to live and to raise their sheep. This helped the Israelites to prosper, and they became a large group of people over the next 400 years. Now, enough time had passed where the memory of Joseph and all that he did to save Egypt had long been forgotten. The Egyptians began to differentiate themselves from this massive group of foreigners living among them. It was out of this social separation that the Egyptians began to try to control and ultimately exterminate the Israelites. First, they took away their livelihood by making them slaves. When that didn't work, they moved on to even harsher slavery, brutality, and probably starvation. Lastly, they moved into exterminating all male-born Israelite children. It was into this chaos that Moses arrived. As an infant, Moses was kept alive by being hidden for his first three months of life. When Moses' parents could hide him no longer, his mother implemented a rescue plan that she had thought of and prayed for about for about three many months. The plan turned out exactly as she had hoped. Moses was able to come home a time before he became adopted as son of Pharaoh's dad. Okay. It was during this time at home that Moses' parents instilled lots of godliness, purpose, and mission into his young life that when he was old, he didn't turn from it. When Moses was 40 years old, he went to visit his fellow Israelites. He saw an Egyptian beating an Israelite and decided to deliver justice by killing that Egyptian. Moses assumed his people would recognize that God had sent him to rescue them, but they didn't. And as a result, Moses' actions cost him everything. Having been rejected by his own people and jeopardizing his loyalty to the Egyptians, Moses had to flee for his life. Even though it seemed that Moses clearly knew God's mission and will for his life, he hadn't bothered to ask or inquire or seek God's plan or timing. It was this choice that changed everything for Moses. Moses would spend the rest of his days as a desert person. It was in this desert that Moses learned how to wait and to be still. Once Moses figured out that he needed to ask and inquire of God first, that's when his life began to have real purpose. And as a writer in some of these devotions, I get to have the time to study and put a lot of time and effort into this, and which I really appreciate and I love doing. And uh, I'm kind of a procrastinator, as some of all of us are. And it was coming down to the wire. I didn't feel like I had enough uh, material to get this written. And I was kind of praying about it and... I said, where in the world am I going to find time to do this? And then that, that was probably a Thursday or Friday. And then Sunday night, I didn't feel very good. And then uh, it ended up being, I, I, I had the flu the whole next week. So I had plenty of time. God made time, or I didn't necessarily make time, but he made time for me. So as we all sit home in, in our quarantined houses, God's making time for us to dive into his word and pray and get to know him more intimately. So I encourage you all to keep at it. All right.
Bye. See you, Fondy. Bye.